Hi everyone, today we'll be going through how to get your Reillusion Character Creator 3 characters into Blender and working with Rococo mocap. This workflow covers both body and hand mocap, but we're also going to dive into facial mocap retargeting as well. Let's jump into it. So here I have my Reillusion Hub launcher, and I'll be using Character Creator 3 version 3.32. You will also need the pipeline extension for Character Creator, and this will allow you to export your characters out of Character Creator into Blender. So let's go ahead and open up CC3. For those of you who may not be familiar with it, Character Creator 3 is a character creation tool, surprise, uh, made by Reillusion. You can also add hair and clothes to your character, and they have a plugin called Headshot where you can upload photos to the program and it will generate a character based on that photo. So for this workflow, we could select one of the base characters provided by Reillusion like this one, or we could build up our own from scratch. But because we have access to Headshot, let's go ahead and use that to create a character. One of my favorite digital doubles recently was Mads Michelson's uh, character in Death Stranding. So I did a quick search in Google for portraits and uh, funnily enough, this toy uh, or ZBrush, I don't know, printout uh, character was the best that I could find. It has nice even light across the whole face. It has a neutral expression. Even though it's a toy, you can still tell it's clearly Mads Michelson. Um, so let's download this and we can throw it into Headshot and see how it looks. So after it's done processing, we can see that it looks pretty good. You know, we could tweak this a lot more to get closer to a proper digital double. We could do more work on the skin and the blending. But for now, let's just add some hair. I kind of like this bun look. And we'll add some clothes. And then I think we're good. You know, again, if you want to know more about how to use Character Creator in general and get deep into how to create these amazing characters, there's tons of tutorials available online for that. This is really more focused on the retargeting workflow. So speaking of retargeting, we need to export this character out to Blender. So I will go to File, Export, FBX. And remember, you need to have bought the pipeline extension for Character Creator in order to be able to export out your characters. I'm going to select Blender as my preset, and then I'll select just mesh because we don't have any movement as my FBX option. And I will keep the pose in an A pose. So I'll go over this more when we get into Blender, but essentially even if we hit T pose here, it's not going to truly repose the character's rest pose. So it's easier if we just leave it at A pose because that's what it's going to be even if we hit T pose. I'll also click delete hidden faces which will delete all the skin under the clothes so we don't get any clipping. And then I will click this gear icon up here to make some advanced changes. So the two most important things that we check here is first mouth open as morph. This is going to allow our facial mocap to drive the character's jaw instead of just their lips. If you don't check this, their jaw is driven by a bone instead of a shape key, which isn't what we want. We also want to click Merge Opacity to Diffuse Texture under Textures. Okay, now we can hit Export. So after this finishes, we can open up Blender. I'm in Blender version 2.91.2. And the first thing we'll do is import our Mads character. So I'll go to File, Import, FBX. And then I'll find the export from Character Creator and make sure that Automatic Bone Orientation is checked and then I will hit import. So we need to prep this character just a little bit. If we change over to a shaded mode, you can see that we have some issues with the hairline and the eyelashes. To fix this, we can first select our hair and then we'll go into our material settings. I'll select this scalp material and then down under settings, we want to change the blend mode to alpha blend and turn on back face culling. So then we'll go back up and we'll select the high pony material and select alpha hashed for this one and back face culling. Then we'll select the eyes and choose alpha blend and back face culling for each eye.
then I'm actually going to select this tier line object and just delete it. You can mess around with the alpha blend on that as well, but I'm choosing not to on this one. And finally, we'll select the base body and then we'll go down to the eyelashes material. And we will select alpha blend and back face culling. So we've followed a great tutorial to figure this all out, and we have that in the description below if you want to dive deeper. But the character is looking pretty prepped and ready to go, so now all we need is some actual mocap. So if we jump over to Rococo Studio, I'm already in my Smart Suit Pro and Smart Gloves, and we're also now just going to turn on facial motion capture using this iPhone 10. So if you want more info on how to get all this hardware set up, you can find tons of tutorials on our YouTube channel or lots of support on our website. This workflow also works if you aren't using facial mocap. So if you're just using the suit or gloves or you're just retargeting using mocap that you maybe you found on Mixamo, you can ignore the facial mocap component. However, we are going to use facial mocap and I have my iPhone set up here on a tripod because I'm not going to be moving around a lot. And now we'll just record something like what we saw in that original Death Stranding trailer that we were looking at. But I'll add in some facial motion and blinking at the end just to see what that looks like. Okay, playing this back, everything looks pretty good. So I will rename this take, Mads Mocap. and then I will select export. So when I'm working in Blender, I normally select an FBX and a binary FBX. Because we're working with facial mocap, we also wanna make sure that face is checked here. And then I'm going to be using the human IK skeleton and I will select 30 for the FPS. And then I will hit export. So now we can hop back into Blender and we will import that mocap. When we export facial mocap, you can see that the face is exported separately from the body. So first I'll import the body mocap and remember to always check automatic bone orientation. And then once that's in, I will import the facial mocap. We'll kind of move the face up here so we can see it. And now if we hit play, you can see that we've imported everything correctly. So the first thing we'll tackle is retargeting the body and hands mocap. Go ahead and open up the Rococo plugin. If you need help installing this, you can check our main tutorial for the plugin in the description below. I'll go to the retargeting panel and then I'll add the mocap into the source field and I'll add our character's armature or skeleton into the target field. Then I will hit build bone list. So this bone list should generate automatically but if it doesn't, you can go in and manually add all the corresponding bones. On the left here, we have our mocap skeleton bones, and then on the right, we have our character's bones, and we need to make them match up. So you can see that it left this field blank here because our character actually only has two spine bones. They've already been partnered with our mocap's first two spine bones, so we can actually leave this field blank. You can also hit save to save this bone list so it will generate the next time in case it didn't generate automatically for you this time. The last thing we need to do right before we hit retarget is adjust our mocap skeleton to match our character's pose. So to have this retargeting work properly, both the mocap and your character's skeleton have to be matching as closely at, as possible at the first frame. So I'll make sure I'm on the first frame, then I will select our mocap skeleton, I'll go to pose mode and then I'll select these upper arm bones and just rotate them down so that they're in an A pose. When that's done, I'll select current under pose and hit retarget animation. So now if you hit play, you can see that we've retargeted our mocap really well. So if you don't want to hear about facial mocap, you can skip ahead to applying some tweaks to this mocap to make it look really good and fix these shoulders. But we are going to apply this facial mocap. So this process is a little bit more involved. And the thing to note going into it is that we can't actually link up our eye movement from the facial mocap we recorded in Rococo Studio. 
the Rococo facial mocap uses blend shapes for the eyes, whereas the character creator three characters use joints or bones for the eyes. And you can actually see this if we select our character and jump into pose mode and then open up the pose skeleton. And if you shift click on this little uh, twirly, we can unfold the entire skeleton and then we can find the actual eye joints. And so you can hand animate the eyes if you want. It's pretty easy. Again, they're just working off these joints. But unfortunately, there isn't a way to easily directly copy over the keyframes from our Rococo mocap onto these eye bones as of yet. However, if we jump back into object mode and then we select our base body on our character creator character and go into object data properties, we can see all these shape keys. For example, if we scroll all the way down, we have this merged open mouth, which controls the lower jaw. Now, if we take a look at our Rococo motion capture, we can see that we have a similar shape key called jaw open. So in order to transfer the jaw movement from our Rococo mocap to our character, what we're going to do is rename the shape key for our character. So for this one, I'll go back to the body base mesh. I'll find that merged open mouth, and then I'll change it to jaw open. Then I'm going to hover over the value here and hit S or right click and hit insert keyframe. You need to do this so it will show up on the dope sheet. So now if we do go to the dope sheet and select our facial mocap from Rococo, we can find those jaw open keyframes. Double click on the shape key to select all of them and then hit control C to copy them. And then we'll go back to our character's base body and find our jaw open shape key, which should have one keyframe. And then we'll paste all those keyframes from our motion capture onto our character. And there you go, you can see that the jaw is now animating along with our Rococo facial motion capture. So fortunately, you don't have to do this one by one, but you do have to go in and rename all the shape keys on your character to the same shape key names used by our Rococo facial mocap. To make things more confusing, our facial mocap actually inverts the left and the right. And so what we need to do is reverse the left and the right when we're renaming our character's shape keys. So the way I normally do this is I just open up a list of all of the Rococo shape keys. We use the Apple AR kit blend shapes so I can find that list online and we'll put a link to that in the description below. And then I go through and I rename all of the character shape keys to match these. So it takes some experimentation to find out which ones match, but most of them are pretty self-explanatory. For example, for I blink L, we'd rename that to I blink right which is the Apple ARKit shape key name. Remember, we need to invert the left and the right. And then I would add a keyframe to this value. So I'll do the same thing for I blink R. I'd rename that to I blink left and then add a value. Then I can copy all the shape keys from our Rococo motion capture and go over to our base body. And because we've renamed them and we've added them to the dope sheet just by adding a single keyframe, if we paste all of them at once, they're going to paste into the correct values on our character. So if we go through and we rename all of our character's shape keys, we can copy over all the animation from those 52 shape keys from our Rococo motion capture onto our character in one go. You just need to rename them and add that keyframe. We're going to release a Rococo animation hour in the next week where I go through all of this and rename them all step by step. Um, so you can check that out in the description below. It's coming soon. For the purposes of this tutorial, however, I'm just going to retarget the blinking and that jaw open shape keys. So I've done that. And now we have our entire performance transferred over to our character creator character, our Mads Michelson. So the final thing we'll do is make some tweaks to our mocap, which is really easy to do actually in Blender. These shoulders in particular retargeted a little oddly, they're a little pushed up. So to fix this, I'll open up another panel 
and then I will select nonlinear animation. And then I'm going to click this little button next to our uh, animation layer here and we're going to add a new animation layer. Now if I open up the side panel, I will select combine under the blend type because we don't want to replace the animation, we want to tweak it. Now I can select my character and I can go into pose mode and if I make any changes to my skeleton, they will be layered over the original mocap. So I can just make little tweaks here and there where necessary. So I'll tweak the clavicles a little bit and add keyframes to fix them. And then that will just tweak the mocap so it doesn't look as funky. Then I will add some lights and I'm ready to render. So we hope this tutorial was useful. Again, if you want to dive deeper into the facial mocap retargeting, you can check out that animation hour that we'll have linked in the description below, which is coming very soon. There's plenty more that we could do to tweak this. Again, there's things that we could do when we're in Character Creator 3 to add more detail or get our model closer to a digital double of Mads. We could add more clothing, different hair. And then also in Blender, we could tweak this more to get the mocap looking how we want it, just using that animation layer workflow. Please put any questions you have in the comments below, and we will see you on the next one. Thanks so much, everyone.